We're home at Lake Chapala. That'll be Chapala down there. The lake goes 80 kilometers in that direction. Mount Garcia there, 9,000 foot tall. Hokotepec is that direction. The lake is 5,200 feet in elevation. The highest elevation on these mountains behind Ahihik is 8,200 feet. We're missing the emerald green mountains of the summertime. Hi friends, let's talk about retiring and living in Ajijic, Mexico. Please enjoy my stories or whatever else might be on my mind today. I suspect that you've had a lot of bad news go past your life in the last few days, both on the internet and in the news, so I thought I'd start out today with some good news. Uh, Lynn and I returned to our home here in Ajijic, Mexico from our RVing life in Arizona on March 7th. And some of the good news is that we thought we should self-isolate ourselves for a couple of weeks, not only uh, for our own benefit, but to be responsible. And today is March 26th, and the good news is we're fine. Um, Lynn has not been out of our property since we returned, and I have only gone out for essential trips. Um, when you're gone for several months and you come home, the refrigerator and the freezer and the cupboard is empty. So I've had to go to Walmart and a couple of other places to get uh, essential stocks for the cupboards. And have to go to the bank. Um, I have a banking problem. I have a peso account in a Bankomer uh, account here in Ajijic, and uh, I've gone down to the bank several times to try to go into the bank, and it's been closed. Uh, I haven't figured out if that's um, every day, every hour because of the uh, virus or if I've just had bad timing, but my problem is that my ATM card to get money out of that account expired in December while we were gone. And um, unlike some other places in the world, um, you have to go into the bank here to get your ATM card renewed. Anyway, so that, uh, those funds are not available to me, and I've been going to other ATMs to get cash from my U.S. bank accounts. And I do that, of course, at ATMs with an um, uh, uh, ATM card and a debit card. And I'll talk more about that later, because there's something about going to the bank that I want to talk with you about today. But uh, some more good news. I've, uh, my maid and my gardener come here, um, the maid a couple of days a week and the gardener three days a week, and their report is that they do not know anyone here in Ahihik or at Lakeside who is sick with the virus. And I've talked to other friends uh, in the area and nobody knows anybody that's sick here, so we look, upon that, we look upon that as very good news. Now, I'm not hiding my head in the sand about it, and I'm not making anything other than essential trips out of the house, but um, um, so far, so good. I'm sure that uh, it will come to pass that there is some here. Uh, the local Mexicans are expressing a desire to not have uh, Guadalajarans come down for the weekend. Um, there are some cases up in Guadalajara. Um, I'm sorry to be distracted. I hear somebody talking. They're in a boat out on the lake. Um, more good news. I heard from RVing friends back up there in Arizona uh, near Lake Havasu City that the Walmart in Lake Havasu City has been restocked. Uh, they didn't say anything about toilet paper. 
I, am, I do have a toilet paper report for you from the Walmart here in Ajijic, Mexico. Toilet paper. More good news. Um, at least it's good for uh, those of us who um, have our income in U.S. dollars uh, and spend their living expenses in pesos. The peso to the dollar is up to nearly 25 to 1. That's very, very high uh, historically. And we do need cash here. Um, a lot of things can be paid for with a debit card or a credit card, and uh, even small uh, mom and pop corner convenience stores, abrotes they call them, uh, now have a machine that you can stick your card into and they take a plastic. But we still need cash for a number of things, and one of those things is paying the maid and the gardener and um, the guy that cleans the pool, and this is all cash payments. We also had um, some uh, trees that needed attending to when we returned. Uh, one of the trees that we um, uh, severely uh, cut back two years ago finally didn't make it, and we had it uh, taken down before it fell down. And That was also a cash payment, and, and by, the, by, the, by the standards that we live on here, uh, a, a rather large one. Anyway, uh, let me talk about going to uh, the bank to get cash. I went to a place that I haven't normally frequented, and I did it for a particular reason. Last summer, I made three videos about expat banking. And my message was that if you are living where you spend currency in a different currency than the one you income is in, for me it's I am paid in U.S. dollars and my living expenses are in Mexican pesos. So there's always this weekly at the least and uh, or monthly conversion of dollars to pesos and people worry about ATM fees and my message was forget about the ATM fees they're not significantly important what you need to be paying attention to is the exchange rate well I went to this place that I don't normally go to and for, for locals I'm talking about um, there are three locations right together here in Ahihik, uh, La Floresta actually, uh, the Walmart, and there are two ATMs in the Walmart. The one on the left is the Bank Homer, which I can't use because my card is expired and I can't get a new card just now. And the other one is the Citibank, and that's the one I usually use. And I use that with my... Um, Capital One 360 account because it gives me a good exchange rate and uh, the fee is non-consequential. So, why did I go to a different one? Well, there's an HSBC straight across the street. That's a bank and they have uh, two ATMs in there. And that's the one that I made the video about that they ripped me off on the exchange rate and uh, I got like 9,000 pesos out of there and it cost me... 50 or 60 bucks. Go look at those videos. I'll put links up here. Anyway, there's another one, and it's around the corner in Central Magno, and it's the one over by Wings Army, and that's at a place called CI Bank, and uh, it's where you can exchange money. It's a money exchange place. So I went over there, and the reason I went over there is because last August I had this conversation in the parking lot at Walmart. I get recognized at Walmart all the time now, and by the way, that's fun, and uh, I enjoy it, and I'm a friendly guy, and I'm, 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 I, I love to, to have that experience. I'm in, the, I'm in the aisle loading up 
cereal in my cart and, it's, and I get this, hey, JC, or whatever. Anyway, uh, I'm, um, I encourage that. So if you see me around town, love to talk to you. Anyway, I have this conversation because a guy recognizes me in the parking lot last August and he says, oh, I just watched your thing and uh, I, in a conversation, uh, he told me a number of things that I could have argued with. I didn't argue because I don't want to argue, but I just listened to him. And what he told me was, oh, I have this Canadian bank and I didn't have to pay attention to all those fees and stuff because they refund the fees. I've also had people tell me, and they tell me this over and over in comments and in person when the conversation comes up, oh, I've got a, a Charles Schwab account and they refund the fees, so it doesn't matter which ATM I go to. There is a great difference in ATMs, and the fee that you're charged is of no consequence whatsoever in the big picture of things, and that's what I want to talk to you about today. Hi, friends. It's several hours later, and I talked for 25 minutes, and I was very well prepared, talking about the difference between the ATMs and the exchange rate, and what was important about all of that. And I had all of these notes, and I, like I said, I talked for 25 minutes. Let me show you my notes. So I've got all these notes here, and I'm talking, 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 and I'm... As I'm editing all of that, it becomes evident to me that it's boring. It's just boring. It's too many numbers, and it's boring. If you've been watching my videos for a while, you know that I like to hear the sound of my own voice. <laughs> so when I say it was boring, it was boring. So I decided to just come back and do this very simply. I went to the bank. I went to the ATM that everybody goes to, not everybody, but a lot of people go there uh, because the a ATM fee is only 17 pesos. And over across the street at Walmart, the Citibank one is 30 pesos, and the Bankomer one is 80 pesos. That's the uh, ATM fee that that machine charges you. It has nothing to do with the bank charges that you might get from your own bank. Anyway, uh, bottom lines. Let's just talk about bottom lines instead of all of that math. I'm really good at math, but I went to the ATM. Over there by uh, Wings Army. And I used my U.S. bank card, and my total charges were $18.58 for the cost of walking away with 5,000 pesos. My Capital One card, it was $9.68. And these charges were because of the difference in the exchange rates. The exchange rate spread is what's really important that you have to pay attention to. They took $213 out of my U.S. bank account or my Capital One 360 account, and the exchange rate they give me was 23.47. Now on their window, it said 25. I looked it up, and the actual exchange rate that day was 24.55, and that's a difference of 0 .08, but that's not a percentage. It's one exchange point. How do you figure the percentage? Here it is. 0 0.08 divided by 24.5 is 4.4%. 4 4.4% 4 .4 of 5,000 pesos, which is what I got, is 20, 220 pesos. And 220 pesos is $8.96. That's what it cost me in the exchange rate spread to get $5,000 in my pocket to walk away from the ATM. There was also a 72 cent, that's 17 pesos, 72 cents. So my total cost was $9.68 to get 5,000 pesos out of the ATM. Now U.S. Bank also charged me $6.50 for an ISA fee, that's an international transaction fee, and in spite of the fact that I already paid 17 pesos for an ATM fee to the ATM machine, I also paid $2.50 
for an ATM fee to U.S. Bank. It's on my statement. I get three charges every time I use my U.S. Bank card. And then I went across the street to Walmart and I got another 5,000 pesos. And I'm not going to do the math for you. Take my word for it. I'm really good at math. It cost me $4.32. So in my bank statements, $222 out of U.S. Bank, $213 my Capital 1360 account at that ATM by Wings Army, and $4.32, $208. And what's my point? My point is that everybody worries about getting their ATM fees uh, returned. Oh, I got a Schwab account, I get my ATM fees back. The ATM fee at Wings Army CI Bank is 72 cents. So you get your 72 cents back. Big deal. 72 cents. Oh, it's this shiny thing over here. I'm going to get 72 cents back. Well, over here, they're taking $9.68 that you're not paying attention to. I figured this out in terms of a budget. $2,500. And why do I use $2,500? So $2,500 is about what uh, the legal requirement is by the country of Mexico to have a legal residency uh, visa. And uh, that varies, goes up and down according to the exchange rate and the consulate that in, interprets the rules and the minimum wage in Mexico City, and it's a whole complicated formula, but about $1,200 per person is the, the standard. 60,000 pesos a month, you'd be doing 12 transactions at 5,000 pesos a time per month. Now, don't tell me that you're going to do 9,000 or 10,000 pesos, and so you wouldn't be paying as much. That's right, you wouldn't be paying as much. You'd be saving 72 cents every time. We're not talking about 72 cents. We're talking about the exchange rate spread. If I did that and lived that way, with my U.S. bank card, it would cost me $222 a month in ATM and exchange rate spread fees. If I did it with my Capital One card over there at Wings Army, it would be 116. My way, 51. You're not going to do this for free. If you're living in a country other than your home country and your money has to be converted from one currency to another for your monthly living expenses, you're going to pay for this. It's not going to be for free. But, don't leave me a comment and say, oh, I've got a Schwab account, so they refund my fees. Check the exchange rate you're getting. There are two ways the exchange rate is uh, messed with. One of them is the ATM itself and how it's set, or the computer that's running it. And the other one is your home bank. And either one of them can do you dirty to the tune of lots of money. Uh, I've still talked too long. Thanks for listening to me today. Hey, if you like me, give me one of those thumbs up. And please subscribe and hit that little bell so you know when I post next. Please share me with your friends on social media. Thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed what was on my mind today.